Brisbane is on the verge of a major transformation with its rail system. The Cross River Rail Project is set to reshape how the city moves, with new tunnels and stations designed to solve one of the city's biggest transportation bottlenecks. But will this $6 billion project be enough to future-proof Brisbane's rail network? Or is there more that needs to be done to keep pace with the city's growing population? Let's dive into how this massive infrastructure plan will change commuting in Brisbane forever. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. Brisbane is Australia's third largest city and has the country's third largest rail network. This system includes around 154 stations across 12 lines, with about 150 million people using it each year. The reason I say about is because Queensland's definition of Brisbane's suburban train lines isn't always clear. They often include nearby cities like the Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast. However, Brisbane's railway network is about to get even bigger thanks to the Cross River Rail Project. As the name suggests, the Cross River Rail will add a new river crossing and some new and upgraded stations to the city's train network. The project includes a new 10 kilometers rail line through Brisbane's Central Business District, featuring two 5.9 kilometers tunnels running under the Brisbane River. The project was originally set to open in 2025, but it's now expected to be ready in 2026, costing just over $5 billion. But why is this project so important? To understand, we need to look at Brisbane's rail system as a whole. Like many suburban rail networks in Australia, Brisbane's is quite old, with most of it built in the late 1800s to early 1900s when the city was much smaller. Since then, Brisbane's population has skyrocketed, but the rail network hasn't kept up. While there have been some new lines like the airport link in 2001, most of Brisbane still depends on a network built over a century ago. Instead of expanding the rail system, the city focused on building more and bigger roads, leading to more traffic. But things are starting to shift. In recent years, public transport use in Australian cities has been growing again, which is putting pressure on old rail networks. In Brisbane, the business case for the Cross River Rail found that without it, many train lines would be overcrowded by 2026. This project is all about easing that pressure and making sure Brisbane's transport system can handle the city's growing population. If nothing is done to expand the network's capacity, there will be major issues. One of the key reasons for the Cross River Rail Project is the significant railway bottlenecks in Brisbane's CBD. These bottlenecks weren't much of a problem 100 years ago, but today they greatly limit the number of trains running through the city. The first major bottleneck is that although Brisbane has about 12 train lines, they all share just two pairs of tracks through the CBD. These four tracks run from Roma Street Station on the CBD's west through Brisbane Central and out to Fortitude Valley and Bowen Hills on the east side. As you can imagine, these tracks get very busy, especially during peak hours. The second major bottleneck is across the Brisbane River, which has only two rail crossings on the suburban network, with just one near the city. This crossing, the Maryville Bridge, has only one pair of tracks, which carries the Cleveland, Beanley, and Gold Coast lines. You can see how this creates capacity issues. This is where the Cross River Rail Project comes in. It will add another pair of tracks through the Brisbane CBD, increasing rail capacity by 50%. The project will also build an additional rail crossing under the Brisbane River, doubling the potential capacity for inner city rail travel from Brisbane's southern suburbs. The new tracks for Cross River Rail will begin just after Dutton Park Station on the Beanley and Gold Coast lines. They will go underground for a new station at Bago Road, which is close to the existing Park Road train station, and will provide an interchange with the Cleveland line and the nearby busway. From there, the tracks will head east to a new station at Wollongaba, home of the famous Gaba Stadium. After that, the line will turn north, 
crossing beneath the Brisbane River to a new station in the heart of the CBD at Albert Street. This new station will offer a more direct connection to the southern part of the city, including the Queensland University of Technology, compared to the existing Brisbane Central Station. After Albert Street, the new line will continue north to Roma Street Station, where two new underground platforms are being built. This will create an interchange with all of Brisbane's other suburban rail lines. What you don't see on most maps is that there are extra tracks looping from the western side of Roma Street Station around to Bowen Hill Station. These tracks are rarely used, except during special events like the Royal Queensland Show where a special service runs to the Exhibition Station, the only stop on these tracks. However, this will change thanks to the Cross River Rail. After Roma Street, the new line will surface and connect to these tracks, running to an upgraded exhibition station, which will finally receive regular year-round service. After Exhibition Station, the tracks rejoin the rest of Brisbane's rail network just past Bowen Hills Station. From here, trains will be able to run to either the Redcliffe Peninsula or Sunshine Coastlines. Speaking of the Sunshine Coastline, I recently made another video about it, including a new extension being added. I'll link that if you want to check it out. When the Cross River Rail project is complete, Brisbane's rail network will look a little different. Using the new tracks, the Beanley and Gold Coast lines will connect directly to the Sunshine Coast and Redcliffe lines. There will also be changes to the lines using the existing two pairs of tracks running through the Brisbane CBD. The first pair will link the Rosewood and Springfield lines with the Airport and Shorncliffe lines. The second pair will connect the Cleveland line with the Fernie Grove line. This leaves only the Exhibition line and Doombin line. The Doombin line will continue on its current route from Doombin to Roma Street, while the Exhibition line will likely cease to exist. Its original purpose of connecting the Exhibition station to the rail network will be fulfilled by the lines using the Cross River Rail tracks. With fewer lines sharing each pair of tracks in the CBD, Brisbane's train network should become more reliable. Problems on one line will be less likely to affect others that don't share tracks, and more space will be available to run additional trains, especially during peak hours when the demand is highest. During peak commuter hours, the network is at its busiest. However, the number of people traveling during these times hasn't bounced back to pre-pandemic levels, which is when the project first started. Interestingly, it's off-peak travel, like weekend trips, that has seen the strongest recovery. During off-peak times, overcrowding in the CBD isn't the problem. Instead, the issue is that there aren't enough trains running at all. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that Brisbane is the third largest city in the country, with the third busiest public transport network. But when you break it down per capita, Brisbane drops to fifth place, behind cities like Perth and Adelaide. Despite having double the train stations compared to Perth, Brisbane's stations are used far less. One major reason is the poor frequency of trains, especially outside peak hours. In Perth, almost every station gets a train every 15 minutes during off-peak times. In Brisbane, though, wait times of 30 minutes or more are common. This makes taking the train in Perth much easier. People can just show up and go. In Brisbane, you often have to plan your trip around the timetable. And if you miss your train, you could be stuck waiting for quite a while. This inconvenience leads many to choose their cars instead. Even though the Cross River Rail project might not be as urgently needed now compared to before the pandemic, Brisbane's population is still growing quickly. That extra rail capacity will certainly come in handy. While the project will allow more trains to run during peak hours, Brisbane should also focus on improving off-peak train frequencies. This can even be done with the current infrastructure before the project is fully completed.